So the word defibrillator for today, we'll be trusting God for a word from within the word. Hmm. I want you to imagine. I can only imagine. What is it that God could do for you? Have that prayer that is so deep within your imagination as you say, Father, this is what I imagine my future to be. And then we go to James 1 and verse 5. We're going to start off there. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God, who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly, without reproaching or fault fighting, finding, and it will be given him. That is so exciting. The ever giving God. I love that. The giving God who gives everyone liberally and ungrudgingly. Now that is fantastic. It's going to be given to us. Then there's a comma. Verse 6. Only it must be in faith that he asks. No wavering, no hesitating, no doubting for the one who wavers. Now it's going into a character. So he's saying when it comes to wisdom, if you want it, God's going to give it to you. But hey, you must do it within faith and you must believe that you received it, which is quite good. And that's a quite a good life lesson because you just go, you know what, Lord, I'm trusting for their wisdom. Now I'm going to apply it across my life and you're going to make my thoughts according to your will. So I'm just going to push forward and I just know that I have that wisdom. But if we're not doing it in faith and we're a person who wavers, if there's hesitating, doubting. And then it says, if you have that character flaw, so listen to this, only it must be in faith that he asks, no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts, is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly, and here it is where it hits me hard, for truly let no such person imagine there's that word. So here we've been imagining what God can do for us. And it says, For truly let no such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks from the Lord. For being as he is, a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, dubious irresolute, he is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels and decides. Wow. So there he says, ask anything and it'll be yours. But if there's no faith and you doubt and you waver and you become a double-minded person or you are that person, do not imagine. Just scrap it. It's not going to happen for you. And the best way that I can explain it, let's say you're leaving, let's say, Fishhook area in Cape Town. Now, if you know the Fishhook area in Cape Town, you can go out of Fishhook, Hard Bay side, over Oak Observer, or you can go around Colt Bay side. Those are your three options. So let's say we're arranging a party for you on the other side of the mountain. And I catch you in the mall and it's all kind of sneaky and we're going to give you a big surprise. But we're going to kidnap you on the other side. We're going to take you to this amazing venue and everyone's going to be there for you. So I say to you, so which way are you going home? And you go, uh, you know what, I think I'm going Colt Bay. So I say, no worries, no worries. And off we go. Then I phone everybody and I say, Colt Bay, is, they're going to be coming along that side and you can catch them there. And then as I'm about to go towards um, the car and I'm leaving the mall, I bump into you again and I say, you're looking for your, forward to your trip around Colpe and you go, no, I think I'm going to go over the mountain. I'm, I'm going to go Oak Observer. And I go, excuse me? No more Colpe? No, 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 Oak Observer. And I go, okay, fine, fine. Then I go around the corner and I tell everybody, and I say, hey, God's changed. We're now going to go to Oak Observer. They're going to be coming over there. And then as I'm climbing into the car, I check you and you check me and I say, Enjoy Oak Observer, and you go, nah, you know what? I think it might be hard there. Can you see what happens now? It's like, you know what? Guys, they don't know what they want. We don't know what direction they're coming. We want to give them a party. We want to bless them, but they don't know which way they're going. So let's just wait and see and let them pick a direction. And I feel many times, especially in my life, is I have option one, then I doubt that, and I got option two, nah, doubt that, and the option two. I mean, if God, 
God's just saying, pick a direction. As a man plans his way, the Lord shall direct his steps. If we're not moving and committing, and it's not that God is holding anything back from us and he doesn't want to answer the prayers in any way. He really does. And he has everybody set up and things moving on your behalf. But if you're going to be double-minded, look what happens. We become unstable, unreliable, and uncertain about everything we think, feel, and decide. Now, God can bless you in any direction. Just pick it. So we ask God for wisdom in something that we want to do. We trust him in faith that we have it. And we are no longer double-minded. Heavenly Father, I repent that I become double-minded. Whether it's my insecurities, whether it's fear, whatever the excuse is, Father, there is none. I have to do it in faith. And Father, your word says that anything that's not done in faith is a sin. And Father, I don't want to sin in that arena. I want to be so bold and so confident that I'm just going to jump in, understanding that you're either going to catch me or you're going to teach me how to fly. You are in control. It's not for me to figure out where my next meal is coming from. It's for me to know that my next meal is coming. Because it's on you I depend. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and thank you that you are the giving God who gives to everyone liberally, ungrudgingly, without re reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given to us. And today we declare, we do it in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah.